Hi guys, welcome back. This is the ABS Grand Tournament. We're in for a treat. The Grand Final is will be will be happening in a few minutes between Orange and RDU, between Arkan and Nihilum. Uh, I would say maybe not Nemesis because we're lacking Tempo Storm in the final and Arkan <laughs> is there, but uh, I mean maybe the second to ne second Nemesis for Arkan. Uh, but anyway, before the tournament will come to a conclusion, we'd like to make a few announcements uh, before the Grand Final. So, Abyss Grand Tournament is, as of course we all know, being hosted by Abyss, and you can visit, pay them a visit at abyssgaming.com to see their calendar, because that's what it's all about. This is the go-to place uh, go to place for esports uh, site, so you can check all the schedules, all the matches, all the results from 10 different covered games, esport titles. Uh, an example games like StarCraft, Dota, League of Legends, uh, Hearthstone, of course, Smash Bros, uh, Counter Strike, and more. And you know, just get your life, make your life easier by having notifications by installing Firefox and Chrome, Chrome plugins, so you can be always up to date with what's happening in the competitive gaming in all of esports and um yeah that's it that's abs uh so we'll definitely want to look into that if you want to get more information about the tournament just type exclamation mark abs gt so you'll get some term, uh, tournament information in the chat i would guess that this might be not the best way of doing that in case the chat is uh more than 25k people and it's <laughs> right now around 40 so maybe that's not the best way and the best way to check brackets would be just going it would be just just to go to abusgaming.com and go to the tournament site uh yeah so the final total what do you think orange or rdu what's your prediction Oh, straight out the gate, making me uh, put my neck on the line here. Um, I picked RDU in the last game, and that paid mm -hmm. off. So I guess I'm gonna gonna stick with my boy, and we're gonna go with RDU here. Um, okay. Just, just looking at the lineups, I think the big talking point here is no Warlock has made it through to Grand Finals. These are both Warlock-free lineups. So uh, we saw Firebat particularly looking to target Handlock with his lineup. Um, so maybe after seeing the big splash that um, that Handlock made in the the BlizzCon qualifier tournaments. Um, Handlock probably an easier deck to target than Patron, and those were the two big standouts along with Druid. Um, and I guess you can throw Druid into that mix as well. Like out of all three of those, it's probably easier to target Handlock than it is to target either of the two other decks. Mm -hmm. um, just because you know the the tech cards against them are just so swingy. Um, yeah, you know, we saw Cipher running things like Black Knight. We saw Firebat oh, yeah. running things like extra big game hunters. All of those cards really effective against uh, Handlock, and it seems to have worked reasonably effectively and the, the Warlock players have not made their way through the Grand Finals. Mm -hmm, that's true. And yeah, as you said, Orange doesn't have the handlock. RD doesn't have the handlock. Um, but, oh, by the way, one more information because I would uh, I would more, most likely forget about it. Orange is playing from a hotel because he's back from a fireside gathering, so unfortunately he will not have his camera. Okay. But that's cool. Uh, RD will have it so you can uh, enjoy his majestic mustache. And um, what else can we say before we start the games? But we will be going briefly into those. Um, I mean, we have missed... we have priest in grand finals, right? That's a tool. Yeah, that's that's, that's amazing. Mm. And if you missed any of the games, if you missed any of the semifinals, quarterfinals, you can check the VODs on the YouTube channel of Abus, which is YouTube.com/slash/AbusGaming, uh, and of course hit the follow button for the future Abus tournaments on this site so yeah. twitch.tv abus tv you're sitting on it why not click the follow button right indeed so just looking at how the matchups line up in particular we have druid paladin warrior from rdu versus druid mage priest from orange um so let's just single out the tempo mage as a talking point how does that do in general against uh rdu's lineup pretty effective against the druid right it can mm -hmm, do reasonably mm -hmm. well against the paladin if it lines up the right uh Flame Waker combos. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, the Patron Warrior has a good chance to get off to like a fast start if you're playing cards like Mirror Image and you can really wall out the early weapons. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the Tempo Mage might be a pretty effective deck in this lineup and it's certainly done incredibly well for Orange so far. And Orange was always opening with the Tempo Mage, if I recall correctly. Yep. And that's the case in the Grand Finals too. He 
has continued to lead Tempo Mage and RDU, whether he's uh, made any sort of read on that or not, is going to go with his Secrets Paladin, and he and is, he kept... in fact, keeping Mysterious Challenger. Exactly. That's what we were talking about on the, uh, during day one. Right. Should you keep the Mysterious Challenger always or only when you're going second? Yeah. Um, or not at all, which I guess is a viable option as well, but one that I'm, I'm kind of leaning away from. That was my initial stance, which I wanted, mm -hmm. just wanted to secure my early game and just trust that I'm going to draw into one in time. But I think keeping it with the coin, I think most people agree that that's a good strategy. But yeah, without the coin, a bit more of a gray area. But um, chooses not to play out the knife juggler there to just to compete with the mad scientist, which seems fine when you have uh, muster for battle in your hand. There's a lot of value to come out of your, your knife jugglers. So. Second time tree of life in this uh, tournament. Oh. This time, um, it's not... Like, when we saw it the first time, it was kind of a... Um, the, the tempo mage was aggressive, and then the deck that it was playing against, the patron, was patron warrior, yeah. yeah, in that matchup, they are kind of just playing for survival, so the Tree of Life was more helpful for them. But in this matchup, both decks are pretty aggressive, so the Tree of Life is uh, more of an ambiguous card, really. It's going to favor the guy that's behind, of course, if it gets used at all, but not as clear-cut as the one that we saw in the Patron Warrior game. Yep, that's true. And one upside of this draw is the fact that Ardu didn't draw a single secret yet. Yep, absolutely. That's very, very good observation. So his Mysterious Challenger is going to pick up full value at this point, and Muster for Battle does help him get some pretty nice value onto the board here. Mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm. long as, as long as there is no uh, Arcane Missiles or Flame Waker or, in worst case scenario, both next turn, then uh, these, these tokens should uh, start to pick up quite a lot of value on the board for him. Yeah. The Flame Cannon is not that great, but um, Orange it's not that great because there's a lot of minions on Paladin board usually. Mm -hmm. uh, what Orange wants to pick here is a single Flame Walker because that pairs so well with the Blessing of Wisdom. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and give him a knife juggler here and then uh, activate the knives. And it looks like he's just going to have to trade one of his 1-1s. One mm -hmm. That's not bad. Yeah, this isn't the worst case scenario. The, the the board now lines up pretty effectively. He has the the, the one two health minion with the divine shielded mini bot. Oh, he oh, chooses I'm, to trade in both. Really valuing really his life here. Yeah, I'm really surprised because it's also not great again. Like keeping the one one is cool against flame cannons. Surprised to not see Orange using a flame cannon here, actually. Like, ping on the mini bot, hit it with the uh, pilot shredder, and then just wow, just flame cannon down the uh, the knife juggler. Looked like a really strong play that turn to me. I really didn't see that coming. Like, trading with the knife juggler with... I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was really for, uh, looking forward to a flame cannon and just met scientist, you know? Right. Yeah. This, this is now back-breaking. Back-to-back, mysterious challenger. Yep. To decrease the amount of secrets in your deck, so the density of your deck will be narrowed down to really cool stuff. Mm. Remind me, how much of the uh, high curve stuff is RDU playing? Is he playing Boom, Tyrion, that sort of stuff? I think he's not playing Tyrion at all. Okay. But that will be Dr. Boom for sure, because we saw some really curious, uh, peculiar stuff with the uh, RNG on uh, Dr. Boom with RDU, right? That was him? Yeah, quite possibly. Um, but more importantly, he's having to navigate his way through a uh, Mysterious Challenger turn. He can ping off the shield here, and he has two attempts to try and snipe down the mini bot with a uh, flame cannon if he wants to. But is that the right line to go for, go for Lothar? What do you think? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I would go for the double flame cannon and ping. Definitely. He can trade into the 2 1 first, yeah, just to maximize the odds. And then he has double flame cannon, which is at least guaranteed to take down one of these two big minions. That's mm -hmm. not a bad that's, outcome for him. That's not a bad outcome, but at the same time, there's the second mysterious challenger, <laughs> yeah. which will just refill the board, and that's just crazy. I think you just play Dr. Boom in, in response to this second challenger, right? Instead of messing around with things, I feel like just slamming Dr. Boom on the board is probably the way forward. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well. Uh, if, uh, if Challenger wait, wait, wait. comes what, down what this he, turn... What if you just play Cockhammer? Cockhammer looks pretty good, right? I just yeah, yeah. As well, yeah. You, you trade with the weapon for the Azure Drake? Yep. Oh, wait. He's not playing Cockhammer because he's playing Juggler first. So he's going for... Oh. Oh. Okay. 
Interesting. So he was trying to get the taunt to protect his 7-2 and allow him to push face. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Arcane Missiles is a pretty nice top deck here, but it it, mm, it does slow down his development and uh, doesn't allow him to play a Dr. Boom this turn if he wants to go down that route. Would you favor the Cockhammer and a Juggler instead of the Mysterious Challenger? Because if you play the Mysterious Challenger, you get the second Noble Sacrifice, so you're yep. uh, kind of denying the Dr. Boom anyway, right? Mm -hmm. In this situation. I don't know. It's It's really a weird situation here repentance on a mad side oh of course yeah playing dr boom and yeah that was the the mind. what i'm talking yeah, yeah, yeah. um so ping happens and suddenly we're in a pretty nice position he didn't choose to use his blessing of wisdom there he could have used it to cycle one card but i think he he's pretty safe in the knowledge that he has a lot of value in his hand for the mm -hmm. following turn so he mm -hmm. might be saving blessing of wisdom for something like an antonida something like a flame waker um no great surprise if he's holding on to it for one of those two things now challenger number two comes down. Wow, it only picks up one secret. One secret wait. So he's only he's playing a very uh, secret light build of this deck then, right? He's yeah, he's only one using he's one redemption. He's literally only playing seven secrets. Right? One redemption, one repentance, one competitive, one competitive spirit, spirit and avenge two. The others. Yeah. Okay, interesting stuff. Yep. Well, he plays equality. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so the Avenge goes off, we get another massive Mysterious Challenger this turn, and yeah, in response he is going to play down uh, Dr. Boom. Ooh, wait, what? Ah, okay. The, uh, this is this is the arena-style uh, Blessing of Wisdom play. Put it on your opponent's uh, minion as kind of uh, pseudo-removal. Yeah, but you don't care about that. Yeah, in, <laughs> in, in Constructed, your decks are just way too finely tuned to worry about that kind of thing. You'll just bank the damage where you can and just trust that you can push through. Um, so Mirror Entity is activated here with the Haunted Creeper. Mirror Entity generally a pretty low value card against this deck. They have so many small minions that they can choose to uh, mm -hmm. trade out. Um, but Flame Strike is particularly, uh, potentially, sorry, a nice board clear this turn. Double unstable for the wall. He clears the Doctor Boom. I didn't see that coming to be honest. Mm, interesting. So, not enough mana to Ronin and ping. He can trade the Boombot into the 9-1 and see what happens and evaluate whether he wants the Ronin from there. But Ronin looks pretty nice, right? You feel comfortable. Yeah. You feel comfortable with your life total right now if you're clearing this 9-1 off the board. Ooh. I think that do you wanted to trade just because he has the Tree of Life in his send. Yeah, sure. But that is his deck density enough to ensure a win after? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, wait, that's lethal. That is lethal. Boombot to face and fire. And that's wow. orange. That's it's orange doing the semi-finals with the crazy Boombots. I was going to say that is not the first time that Orange's Boombots yeah. have done insane things for him this wow. game. So yeah, wow. That's pretty incredible. That's orange. just devastating. <laughs> not only it hit for four, but it had to fit, hit the face in the first time. So it was double 25%. Four minions on board, right? I mean, uh, three minions on board, so 25% to hit face, and then 25% to hit for four, so the fireball can finish it off before you use the tree of tree life. Tree of life, yeah. Oh, this Sorry. deck. Um, yeah, so I guess fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your perspective on the Tempo Mage deck, that is the last time you are going to see Tempo Mage played this tournament. He's got his win with it, so it's eliminated from his lineup. He goes out to a 1-0 lead, and he is going to queue up uh, with his own druid. Oh no, is it now Orange playing the paladin? Yeah, Orange is playing druid. Orange and is playing druid. Artie sticks with the paladin. So he does oh, so have to play in. Okay, so yeah. So I can see his play with um, trading the 9 8 into the 7 7 just to play the Tree of Life after and, that. Yeah, and then try and uh, seal the value in mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. Tyrion later on. Yeah, it makes some sense, sure. Orange has already the swipe in hand, which is very important. Yes. In this matchup, just to clear the board. Absolutely. Oh, Ooh, wow. that's a great pickup as well. That's a great pickup, yeah. Yeah, we mentioned it in the previous series, but Darnus' Aspirin is definitely the ramp card that you want against aggressive decks, just because it serves the double presence of fighting for the board as well as uh, accelerating your mana. So, pretty nice pickup. Uh, now, what do you like here? Do you like the hero power for the full clear, or do you want to just ca carry on ramping up with the Wild Grove? I think Wild Grove is more important. It, because if you're 
uh, if your Dionysus Aspirant is going to die, mm -hmm. you want to play the Palto Shredder anyway, right? Yep, I agree with that. Um, gives you security. You may need or, the, or, yeah. this, or potentially the swipe as well in this situation that we mm -hmm, see here. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I like the security of making sure that you have four mana next turn. Um, seems like the right line. Uh, he does have the option here to play Pilot Shredder if he wants. Obviously, things like Swipe, just like removal spells in general are stronger if you use them when you have With, a board consolidated yes, exactly. already. Um, but clearing the board going into a Paladin's turn four is pretty strong because this is where things like uh, Blessing of Kings can come into play and really uh, start to seal some momentum for the Paladin player. Uh, so, so personally, I would favor the swipe, but I would not. Um, I would not hate the shredder play either. I could understand why someone would play pilot shredder in this situation, and it looks like what uh, orange is going to go for. Hmm. That's interesting because um, now you leave leave your pilot shredder weak to a lot of options. A lot of stuff that can can happen from paladin's side will leave you open to. Just losing board control for the next two turns. A single True Silver Champion will basically kill the Azure Drake next turn and the minion this turn. Yeah. So you can't follow it up with an Azure Drake, right? Mm -hmm. If if that true silver is there if there is a true silver champion. But if if Orange didn't play the swipe on that board, RDU falls into the trap and plays his own pilot shredder. Yep. Um, but still, Swipe is not perfect now against this board. He's probably going to leave behind either the Shredder Drop or the uh, Mini Bot, depending on which one he values um, and how he chooses to go about it. He does have the option to like trade Shredders first, and then if the minion that comes out is a one health one minion, HP, yeah. yeah, then that is a full board clear. But I don't know if that's the line you want to go down. Um, although either way, I think probably trading shredders first is the right way because it gives you the the information on which of the two minions you want to swipe anyway, right? So yeah. Uh, he chooses to do it this way, which does. Wow. Okay. Oh damn. I mean, maybe maybe Orange was thinking. Okay, he doesn't have the truce of a champion. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. bluffs and double bluffs, right? But but Adio no. is not using the truth of a champion. He's going for the blessing of kings. I would uh, say in this situation, right? Blessing of kings into avenge. Yeah, it doesn't seem too bad. Um, it will definitely keep... avenge this turn. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. But then blessing of kings on on a one-one and trade into the Drake. What if you just? trade with the 2-3 and go with the Palted Shredder into the Drake. Okay. Because uh, no. this leaves you really open to swipe. Yes, it does. I mean, your your drop will get buffed from the Avenge, so that's not that bad. Uh, but you can actually... Isn't it better to hero power down the Shredder yes, first it is. and then swipe the minion that gets Ooh. Avenge? That's a millhouse. Wait, they didn't, the Avenger didn't proc. Uh, <laughs> um, are we done? Yeah, you can, no, the Shredder was on the board first, right? The Shredder was in play before the Avenge. So... Okay, yeah, that makes sense, uh, I think. Yeah. It has to, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, never mind then. <laughs> But I could drop from the Palace of Shredder, a 4-4 four, four minion, mm -hmm. with no drawback. The best what can happen from a Palace of Shredder. Yep. Um, almost always the best outcome. Like, sometimes if you're pushing for lethal or something, like, uh, Whirling's Appomatic can be better, but generally, just in terms of pure stats and value on the board, Millhouse Mana Storm is as good as it gets, and the... I mean, uh... There's one downside, which is an upside too, because your opponent will probably just play uh, hero power to kill the 1-1 one, one to play on Avenge, right? Because you know it's not Redemption. Ooh. Uh, uh, but he might be in the same situation where we were, where because he didn't see the secret prop that turn... Yeah, probably. That might be the case. He thinks that it isn't Avenge, but in that case, he... I guess he thinks it's Noble Sacrifice? No, because he hero powered face last turn, right? Hmm... So yeah, just he... purely... No, 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 he didn't. He didn't? 
he didn't because he played uh, his um, Darnas' Aspirant. Ah, oh, that's true, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he thinks this is Noble Sacrifice right now, I think is what's happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so, no, he thinks this is, um, yeah, yeah, Noble Sacrifice right now. Um, so he w didn't go for the the uh, Hero Power Big Game Hunter play, which if you'd have known it was Avenge, is obviously looking pretty attractive. Um, it turns out the Big Game Hunter is just going to get a decent amount of value here anyway, the, uh, the Doctor Boom. Um, so second swipe here would be his best draw, right? Uh, it's a rev, but it's a halfway, halfway of a swipe, I would say. Yeah. Um, oh, the Avenge will be procced, and if it's procced on a bomb, the bomb can be killed with the rev. Mm -hmm. um, but that stops him from developing a second minion this turn, so I think just going ahead and dropping a Druid of the Claw onto the board is probably the way to do this. Mm -hmm. But then RG will follow it up with the equality for the first time in the tournament. Uh, I don't know if Orange was paying attention. It sounds like he was uh, in transit during the the other semi-final game, so he probably missed the information that Equality is in this deck mm -hmm, since mm -hmm. it was the first time we saw it. So this Equality could come down as quite a surprise to him here. Equality into... No, no, no. You, you have to be sure that you don't die to combo next turn. Mm. So if you play Equality now, you are not able to attack with your weapon at all this game to a minion. So yep. let's say he plays the Equality. He uses the first bomb, the 1-1, one, one, to kill the Druid of the Claw. Hopefully, he will kill the Big Game Hunter. Yeah. And that's the first thing you want to do. If the Big Game Hunter doesn't get killed, then you will have to use the second bomb to kill the Big Game Hunter. Because mm -hmm. you want to face damage. Hopefully. Right? Am I, am I right? You want to face damage with the bomb? Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um... Obviously, valuing the the four attack boom bot on the board because they're both Ooh. four they're both four ones at this point, so they're essentially the same minion. It's just one of them is a boom bot and one isn't. But I think you're right. Like you value this boom bot hitting him in the face this turn and then just pushing the four extra with the uh, with the Millhouse Mana Storm. Yep, and he seems to agree. But the trade has to happen, right? Right, he has to be trading, surely. Otherwise, you're dead to combo. Yeah, exactly. On spot. Oh, double, double ones, ones and bombs. That's really unfortunate. Um, Double revs, that's something you want to see because you have... <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, there's a repentance and Orange doesn't know what kind of 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 the secret is that. And it's really terrible for him. Right. Yeah. And he's not dead next turn, but... Yeah, I think this is the right way to do it because this way, if it's Avenge, you get to raft down the mill house anyway. It would have been bad if it was Redemption, mm -hmm. of course, but honestly, is it like redeeming the 4-1 mill house would have pretty much been the same thing at that point. So you're pretty much sure that this is a Noble Sacrifice, right? Yeah, Noble Sacrifice or uh, or Repentance, which it in fact is. Uh... Repentance. Yep. Um, again, it's a little bit of merit that turn if you're expecting the Repentance to just play it in charge and just trade straight up with the 2-3 that's on the board. Um, that way you play around things like Consecration and Muster for Battle, um, trading and, and having the minion retained on the board. Um, but, as you said last turn, RDU, if at any point he does hit a minion with his weapon, he is in range of the uh, the combo. So no, I, I think he has to be aggressive right now, right? With the weapon. Because um, if you lose the minion... Well, this is still lethal next turn anyway, right? Because he's, he's played competitive spirit. So if hero power happens... Oh, yeah, right, yeah, If yeah. hero power happens, 1-1-1 one, one, one gets removed. And then he has six damage from the remaining one ones that get buffed to two twos, and then he has the one extra from his weapon swing. Unless your opponent has double keepers and hero power. Yeah. In which case, then you are just top decking. So. And you need a Tyrion, or oh, yeah, basically Tyrion. Or a mysterious challenger, right? Because mysterious challenger would get a noble sacrifice. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. But the two keepers on board do that a combo anyway. Uh, yes, that's very true. Hmm. So, uh, would you die to combo through Tyrion, in fact, with the two what? keepers on board? Uh, well, you use the face. No, you can't use it. No, you can't. Mm. Well, you can. You will be one off. Uh, well, no, because this there's, there's two damage, well, three damage from RDU that's going to be pushed forward this turn, right? So, oh, it yeah, will, right. It will be uh, too low uh, to hit Tyrion with his face if that happens. True. Secretion is reasonable, but RDU has some decisions to make here. Um, 
I and think we, you have to play the Consecration this turn also. I think the Consecration definitely gets played. It's just a matter of whether you ever bother to trade with one of these minions. Nah. Um, and I, I don't think you do. you do, because just killing one of them doesn't play around the combo at all. Um, in fact, RDU is just going to choose to hold on to the Consecration. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> just If he top decks Tyrion next turn, um, then he might be in a bit of a feels bad man situation because he's not going to be able to do both of those things. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Double innovate. Well, that's the worst draw you could have got. Good game. It is. You might as well just spend one of the innovates here just to use your hero power. Yep. Um, gain that one Four, extra eight, life. 10, 12, 13 damage next turn. So not lethal. Uh, based on the board, right? But with the with the force of nature in hand, it is, of course, yes, lethal of next course. turn. So. He needs a big top deck here and a bend. And it's not, not it. it. And he is going to find this game slipping away from him here. And that's really unfortunate. Look at that. Orange is left on 2 HP, which means if the boom bots were heading for more, more than one. That is a this very, would be very game good point. For Radu. Yep. Both boom bots were heading for one. That is an excellent point. So yeah, if if both of those boom bots had rolled one extra, or if one of them had rolled three or above, then yeah, this would have been yep. a very, very different outcome. But the force of nature is just gonna come down seal the game and orange is going to go out to a 2-0 lead now and he's sitting pretty to take home the inaugural abios uh, hearthstone tournament the abios grand tournament in fact um so all he has left to win with is his dragon priest and dragon priest has a pretty good matchup against uh, the secrets paladin right yes and against the druids too yeah pretty so argue well. is not in a great spot at all for sure not feeling good feels bad man, to be honest but at the same time, it's not said that RDU can't win this. We have seen better comebacks and more improbable com uh, comebacks in Hearthstone competitive history. So, yeah, just buckle up, Radu, and win this game. Like, the next one will be the most important, of course. Everything is on the line, so if he loses, he's out of the tournament and takes the second place. But if he wins, he'll get his hopes up. So he's going to choose to queue up with the Patron Warrior here straight away. Um, I like this matchup a lot for the Patron Warrior, especially if you get the card that you see there, which is Death's Fight. Uh, weapons just get so much value against Priest, just because, mm -hmm. um, you know, the only downside of weapons, really, I mean, they're fantastic cards, but the only downside is that you have to trade your own health for removing minions. But against a Priest, they have no real threat of bursting you down, so you can kind of happily trade off your health for removing minions as long as the board just doesn't get out of control which is what the weapon prevents them from doing so um, anytime you have an early death spite against dragon priest i think you're feeling very comfortable when you can just wait the necessary amount of turns to to draw into things like emperor and uh, your warsong frobbing combos just to finish out the game yep that's very true so um do you even want to do anything here probably not you just yeah. I'm not exactly sure if you should even follow up with an Acolyte of Pain. I mean, your draws are more important than your opponent's draws. I mm -hmm. mean, the priest draws are less important than the warrior draws. So maybe you should go for it. I think the inner rage here almost certainly makes it worth it. Mm -hmm. this, isn't, you... this isn't one of those matchups where you really need to do turn 5 uh, patron combo. So inner raging an Acolyte for early cycle is one of the best uses of it. So I really like the play here. Power Word Shield comes down as a little bit of a quote punish, but yeah, I was about to say I still kind of just prefer coining out the uh, the Twilight Guardian. Here. Let's see what's going on. Um, the Death Spite here will allow him to throw it. Oh, Ooh. never mind. I think we found the uh, the, the rare, best option here. The right? rare turn where turn four Death Spite is not the best option available. It looks like. Ooh, never mind. He, uh, he thinks it is. I I definitely favor the um the slam in a rage there just for maximum cycle. Play battle rage with armor smith. Uh, do you not have enough mana? Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah. our, our POV is uh, freaking out a little bit here. I don't know if it's the same for you, Lothar, but I'm yeah, experiencing kinda... a little bit of lag, so couldn't quite see what, uh, how much mana he had that turn. Oh, so, my mistake. Uh, this turn, what's going on? The spectator POV also makes uh, some problems here. Turn 6, RDU did draw additional, additional um, Acolyte of Pain. But I think you just go for... For the 
gnomes invent a weapon to clear bo or to clear the cleric on the way, right? Yeah, I like this. You don't feel too great about um, slamming the gnomish on the board going into your opponent's turn six because of the threat of something like Cabal Shadow Priest. But honestly, even though 2-4 is about the biggest body that they can steal with Cabal Shadow Priest in this matchup, you'd still rather that got stolen than, uh, say, an Acolyte of Pain that is, is still waiting for, for max value. Mm -hmm. It looks I'll like look he's at... debating inner raging down the 5-4 here, which is an interesting play as well. Well, we didn't see a Valens chosen yet, mm -hmm. and that was a good option to play it, so I don't blame him on not killing the Cleric. Black Queen Corruptor enables a pretty good trade here as well, and uh, the Patron Warrior is actually quite rapidly running out of time. He's at 17 health, there's another 5-4 on the board that he doesn't have too appealing ways of removing. He'd have to do something like Acolyte and Whirlwind and then War Axe it down mm -hmm, if, he wanted, if he wanted to get it off the board. But yeah, I would I favor this kind of development play and not worrying too much about it. Get the armor smith down, start gaining yourself a little bit of armor. Okay, uh, but sounds here, good. Here is where a Cabal Shadow Priest would be really punishing, but unfortunately for Orange, he doesn't find one in his hand. Is he even running Cabals, in fact? I'm not sure if we've seen them happen. I was just thinking about it. I think yeah. he is running any. All right, that would, hmm. that, would, that would go some way to explain uh, RDU's play here, because he has been a little bit fearless against Cabal Shadow Priest, but at the same time, he's been forced to kind of play this game fast because uh, Orange has built up a lot of mid-game pressure against him with the double Blackwing Corruptors. That's true. I I'm still wondering if there will be a case for the Nexus Sarad. He's being drawn almost every single game, and we don't see him being used at all. Yeah, we, haven't, we haven't seen him summon a single spell this entire tournament, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, true. Yeah, I kind of like it here. Yeah! All right, finals time. Woohoo! Let's go. RNG. All right, what are we going to get? Um, Pyroblast. Pyroblast, okay. Just straight in there, straight for the gust. Oh! Stable portal! Okay. RNG into RNG. We know all about Orange's unstable portals, right? So... Yeah. That is that is a pretty good pickup for him based on the way that his portals have worked out so far. You have to go with the patrons here, right? Uh, yeah, I would imagine so. But then you can't clear the Black Queen Corruptor, so maybe you're not. Uh, we can, right? No, 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 you can't because if you go for the Whirlwind, Patron Whirlwind. It's it's for, for free. Oh yes, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Patron Whirlwind. You trade your two guys into the Sarad and then you war axe down the five four. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, not mind me. Uh, but he goes for like... this. Interesting. Show of death. So he can use a Holy Nova here to deny the triple draw from the Acolyte. That looks like a pretty good starting point. Mm -hmm. But he's not healing his minion. No. It kind of sucks. But you got to do what you got to do. Denying the card draw is pretty important. It does give him like double value out of the Armorsmith. Because um, it gets to uh, tank two AoEs, but not much of a way to avoid that. It does end up as almost a full ball clear, just leaves the Gnomish Inventor on the board and he can play down mm -hmm. the stage, uh, a 2 4 Wormrest agent to be competitive against it. One important thing is the fact that uh, Orange has still access to the Azure Drake Holy Nova to clear the board of patrons. Yeah, I mean, that is a turn away, but he does have that option. And it looks like he's turning down playing the Wormrest Agent just because of fear of uh, Warsong Commander Grim Patron on the following turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you go with patrons this turn, right? But only patrons, no Warsong Commander? 3 mm. 6 and. Hmm. I mean, you have kind of stabilized your life total, and you you are staring at Warsong Commander Frothing and two Whirlwinds in your hand. Um, so I could so you wait for I, Emperor, right? I could understand the mentality of like going for the OTK plan this turn, um, but I wouldn't hate the patron development idea either. I don't think we've seen Light Bomb from Orange's Dragon Priest list so far. Uh, no, I don't think so. But yeah, this is the last turn that, we're, like, from our perspective, we know this is the last turn he can get away with the patron board because any turn after this, it's just going to get answered with the Azure Drake Holy Nova. But he does choose to turn it down, and that pretty much looks like. <laughs> oh god! Wow. Uh, is that even good against patron? <laughs> um, I'm not exactly sure, but it creates more more minions on board, and that's definitely a downside. Yeah. 
Wow, he's not going to trade with the 2 1 here. Oh, gonna... he goes for the Hogger. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to put down Hogger. He's going to put down the Wormrest agent. He's going. This is basically a play to encourage the Warsong patron because he has the perfect answer for it on the yes. following turn. That's true. He's baiting out the patron, the Warsong patron. Yeah. And I'm sure that Audio will be aware of that. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, you, you can't squeeze in. No, all, all the you can whirlwinds do, and executes. Yeah, so. all you can do is double frothing and one whirlwind. So uh, that's not, not enough flexibility to yeah. get through the taunts. Hmm. One of the frothings will still get tanked by the Wormrest agent, so there's no way that's going to be enough. Um, so he is going to have to uh, think heavily about using his one and only Warsong Commander in hand here to go for a board clear with the Grim Patron. Of course, if he does that... He's then back to the waiting game a lot more heavily than he was previously because he's now waiting for... He's kind of waiting for Emperor and the second Warsong Commander now. Yeah, that's true. But I think that was the, the play here anyway, right? Uh, so he's going to Whirlwind first and then trade with the Fresh Patron. Yeah, this is fine because not... Like, any attacks you make first, you don't get additional Patrons anyway because you would just leave a one health Patron behind. So the ordering wasn't too important here. Yeah, you could have get, got yourself a big board of one health patrons if you'd have really wanted to, but honestly, like, what difference does it make, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I no difference at all. Or it yeah. So he's left with two Berserkers, one patron, one ruin, but no Warzone Commander and no Depth Spot. Uh, he's going to go with the Vol'jin Holy Nova here instead of the Azure Drake. Well, he's at least thinking about it. Um, I understand the merits of it. It gets a bigger but minion. It's like two, two damage more, but the, the minion is less reliable because it will have only three HP. Right. And you lack a draw. And I think the draw might be the most important aspect here. The draw might be important, yeah, but it's... I can understand the aggressive play. I guess you also haven't seen Fiery War Axe yet from your opponent. So the 6-3 does get answered immediately by Fiery War Axe. I guess that's a concern as well. And it looks like he's come to the same conclusion and that the Azure Drake is the superior option. Just going to go ahead and Holy Nova. This lets you get one more damage to face with your Holy Nova anyway. So some of, uh -huh. the, some of the extra aggression that you lose with the smaller minion, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's regained from the extra damage from the Holy Nova. So I think overall the, the Azure Drake is the more solid play there for sure. So now he, what he needs is next turn draw Emperor into Warson Commander. Um, well, how do you feel about this turn just going for patrons all over again? Because you've seen both Holy Novas at this point, right? And as, as we've discussed, I don't think we've seen um, a Light Bomb in Orange's list. So you can potentially hmm. just Grim Patron, Cruel Taskmaster, Whirlwind again and get yourself four patrons all over again. Okay. Mm, I can see that happening. Yeah, that was probably the, the correct decision. I think it's a pretty reasonable option. I think otherwise you're playing a pretty long waiting game at 15 life, um, staring already down an Azure Drake on the board, and like the development is just going to get stronger. Yeah, and it seems like RDU agrees. He's just going to go all in here. Um, so he needs these patrons now to carry him to victory. If these patrons go down, he's pretty much out of stuff. You know, even with double frothing in his hand, he's used so many whirlwind effects. Um, already, that if there is an answer to this board, he's pretty much accepting that the game is lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but only answer to this board would be a Okanite Circle or, as you said, Lightning uh, Light Bomb. Mm -hmm. And Okanite Circle is definitely not a part of this deck. While the Light Bomb can be, because it it goes well with the. Um, theme of the minions because they usually have more attack uh, sorry more hp than attack yes but not everyone's choosing to use the light bomb at all right it's like a double-edged sword right you have you generally have more minions on the board than the average priest deck so that makes light bomb seem unappealing but at the same time your minions have high health and relatively low attack so light bomb generally does more damage to your opponent's board than your own so i can understand the argument both ways to an extent i personally don't favor light bomb in, in dragon priest at all and it looks like from what we've seen out of orange's deck that uh he feels the same way uh, mm -hmm, he's just mm -hmm. gonna go for the double frothing berserker plan here and he is as we said pretty much all in at this point one of these frothing berserkers is going to be able to be um uh, Shadow of Death down. Um, I don't know if we've seen anything like a Holy Smite in uh, Orange's list that he might be able to combo with the Vol'jin, but otherwise it looks like one of these uh, Frothing Berserkers is going to be left to run rampant on the board here. 
Oh, well, never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, that top deck. Yep. That's true. Wow. That top deck. This might is just sitting the deal here. The absolute no. toppest of decks. I don't think there's any way RDU can make a comeback now. There's not enough damage left in the deck. There just yep. isn't. He'd need this Emperor to stick to the board for like three or four turns, and that's not going to happen because it just gets traded out by the Vulgian straight away. So there just is not enough damage left in the deck. Both Patrons are gone. Both Frothings are gone. He literally just has all the crappy utility cards left in yeah. his deck. So. And there's the Cabal Shalopis too. So it was, wasn't really drawn that well. But that concludes the grand final. That was a quick grand final. 3-0 for Orange. Congratulations to Orange beating RDU in a really brief series. Um, we have seen some RNG bots for, for both players. One was fortunate. The second one was really the other way. Uh, going the other way but congratulations to orange that was not his first tournament win for rdu it wouldn't be the first tournament win either but yep yeah. uh thank you abius for hosting this one it was in really really um really interesting to watch we didn't see a lot of patrons to be honest like maybe not the usual not the usual amount we see yeah uh, in the tournament, so yeah, that's that's it for me. What do you think, so Any last words? Yeah, I mean, I just had a great experience doing this. Uh, Love casting the tournament. Um, really, really awesome event. Uh, lots of great players throughout, and a great experience to me to cast to such a wide audience and cast such a great pool of players. So I've had a great time doing this. I hope you have as well, Lothar, and I hope the viewers have had a great yeah. time watching. So, same goes from me. And just to remind you guys. Pay a visit to abiusgaming.com, show them some love for organizing this tournament. You had two days of action, of Hearthstone packed action. And thank you very much for watching. Congratulations again to Orange for winning this tournament. And so yeah, how do you for taking the second place? Good for you, bro. But not today, right? Thank you again from me and from Subtle. See you guys again. Bye-bye.